Okay, I want to talk to you about DICOM structured reporting. And this is a slide deck I got from GE, and it's really in depth and it's written for somebody that has a deep understanding of DICOM. So don't be stressed if you don't understand every word on the PowerPoint. I'm going to use it as kind of talking points. So just focus on what I'm going to tell you about DICOM structured reporting and don't stress if you don't understand everything in the GE PowerPoint. So the first thing I want to talk about in terms of DICOM structured reporting is when I say DICOM structured reporting, a lot of people's minds immediately go to the patient report or the report of the exam, right? You get a chest x-ray, a chest x-ray has a report. I'm not talking only about that. DICOM structured reporting is not only and specific to that report. It certainly can be a part of it. In fact, the, the word report is kind of a misnomer. It should be called DICOM structured document. A DICOM SR can convey any kind of structured content, not just reports. SR documents can be used anywhere there's a need for lists or structured content, a need for coded concepts or numeric values. So let's get into DICOM structured reporting. The scope of DICOM SR is the standardization of structured data and clinical observations in the imaging environment. SR objects record observations made for an imaging based diagnostic or interventional procedure, particularly those that describe or reference images, waveforms, or specific regions of interest. So, most important, DICOM structured reports happen almost always before the report of the patient study is created. What you need to know about DICOM SR. DICOM SR is a standard to exchange structured data produced in the course of image acquisition or post processing, where leveraging the DICOM infrastructure is easy and desirable and results should be managed with other study evidence. So we're going to pause right here. All semester long, we've been telling you that DICOM is for the images and HL7 is for the text. DICOM images text comes from HL7. Well, sometimes there's some textual documents that are part of the image creation process. And I'm going to skip down here to the example section, right? So the sonographer measurements, the, the computer-aided detection results, QC notes about the images, radiation dose reports. These are text documents that can easily be encoded in DICOM and sent downstream to the radiologist as a DICOM structured report so he can use those or incorporate those into his patient report. So that's what DICOM SR is for. It's to put more text and textual documents with the images from the modalities. Whereas the text in HL7 comes from the HIS or other, the ADT system, the registration system. These are text documents that come from the modality. DICOM SR is not structured data entry. Just because a modality has hierarchical pull down menus for results capture or report creation, that's often said, oh, that's structured reporting. It's not really, it's a structured data entry system. It's not a structured report. DICOM does not standardize applications or data entry techniques. Structured data entry is valuable in terms of creating SR content in certain circumstances. So the key aspects of DICOM SR. SR documents are encoded using DICOM standard data elements and leverages the DICOM network services. These are the same C services that we've been talking about, right? So DICOM SR documents use C get, C find, C store, those things. SR uses the DICOM patient study series information model in the same way that all DICOM images follow that same content tree. The DICOM SR follows patient study series information model. So this is just a picture of a DICOM structured document and you should see some familiar things. You see the the DICOM tags or group numbers and the attribute values and what's in those. So it's in DICOM. Don't worry about LOINC. Don't worry about the structure tree. Just look at this and understand that this is a textual DICOM document. There's a problem with SR flexibility. A document creator can put in anything in any structure. A document reader must be able to handle every possible docu document. So you need to constrain the SR content to enable meaningful 
receiving applications. So what we're trying to say here is that you can create all sorts of different DICOM documents, but it has to be it has to work on your network. It has to work between your modality and your packs. So be careful how much DICOM SR you use to solve problems because it's got to work with your system, it's got to work with other systems, it's a little too wide open. So a lot of places use SR templates and they're like IODs, information object definitions, but with SR content. So they can be used again for radiation dose, they can be used in X-ray CT and MR angiography, places where you would have procedures and you would have procedure notes and things like that is a good place to have an SR template. So, DICOM SR object classes. You have enhanced and comprehensive. You have CAD. Again, this is computer aided diagnosis template. You have key object selection, which works with key image note. It's an IHE profile that we'll be talking about later. You can have procedure logs as DICOM SR object classes and radiation dose reports as DICOM SR objects. So, in summary, DICOM Structured Report is the standard for exchange of structured data, clinical observations in the imaging environment. DICOM SR leverages existing imaging infrastructure and toolkits. DICOM SR is constrained by templates and SOP classes to improve interoperability for specific use cases. If you want more information, if you want to really get into DICOM SR, you can go to the DICOM standard. A guy named David Clooney wrote an entire book, 300 pages about DICOM SR. You can become a DICOM SR guru if that is your path in informatics. And some of the IHE use cases for DICOM SR are in the Radiological Technical Framework, Volume 1, Key Image Note, that we touched on, and they're also in the Cardiology Technical Framework. Thank you for watching.